The Gemara in Yevamos discusses the Indian of Gerus and it's patterned after Harasina. It's like the Jews converted, they, didn't, they needed Mila, Tvila, and Kabbalah's HaMitzvahs. They needed circumcision, Tvila, immersion, and accepting in the Mitzvahs. So too we learn out with Doros. And the many halachas, the Gemara in Yevamos, Krisis, other Gemara is going out that we learn out different halachas. It's patterned after Mayim and Harasinai. So there's a discussion in the Gemara, in the Rishonim, and the Memzayim Abbez in Yevamos, regarding the Seder Hageris, specifically regarding Mila and Tvila. We know for a male you need Mila and Tvila, circumcision and immersion. And the question is, what is the order of the conversion? So the Gemara says, Nisrape Madvila no Somiyad. The Gemara first talks about how you try to discourage someone to make sure they're sincere. But if you see they're sincere, then you could um, do the Mila. So it says you do the Mila right away, and right after they recover from the Mila, you go ahead and you do the Tvila. That's, so the order is clear from the Gemara. First Mila, then Tvila. So the Rishonim asks, but Lachaira, it should be the opposite, it should be out of order, because if you do the Tvila first, then you could do the Mila right away. If you do the Mila, you have to wait until the, the, it heals, and you could go into the mikvah. That could take a couple of days sometimes. So therefore, you, wanna, you don't want any unnecessary delays. You, could, you want the person to, once, once the person's converted, you want it to happen right away, like anything. Like you don't, you, you, have, you take your time, you're deliberate, making sure that the gear is, is good, the person wants to convert, but once it happens, you do it right away. So, what about, so, so why not here? Why don't we do first the tzvila, then the mila? That's a major machokas rishonim on whether the seder ha mila is ma'akev or not. There's a, an obstacle in performing the mitzvah. The Ramban writes, two days in the Ramban, but the Ramban writes that, no, it's, we should do Milit first, but it's not Likuva. It's only in order to show that once he, if he does the Milit, he's less likely to back out at that point. Just a more pragmatic reason to show he's really going to go through with it. And when, but because if he could do the Tvila, he might back out before the Milit. Once he does the Milit, less likely he's going to be backing out. So it's more of a pragmatic technical issue, but if you do the tefillah then the mila, it's not an issue in terms of the gear becoming a yid, gear becoming Jewish. However, the Rashba, the Ritva, there are other Rishonim disagree and say the Seder is Ma'akev. One has to do the tefillah last. You have to be first the mila, then the tefillah. And so why do you have to have the mila and then the tefillah? So the Rishonim right is to remove the Tumas Akam Varolas that a person's an Aro, an uncircumcised, he's not Jewish, in order to prepare himself to become Jewish, to purify himself, so you do, you take away the Aro, you take away the Tuma, and then, only then you could go ahead and go into the Mikvah. And that's why he says if you do the Tefillah first, I think the expression of the Rashba, one of the Rishonim is, or the, Rish, the Ritva, the Rashba, a tovel v'sheretz biyado. It's like holding a impure creature in your hand. In fact, a friend of mine um, told me once he had a shayla that a woman found a frog in the mikvah when she was in the mikvah. In the, and they, they wanted to know if it was a shayla of tovel v'sheretz biyado. Of course, the answer is no. Frogs are mitame and they're alive. But that's what it says here. That if you go to the mikvah first with and you still have the Mila, it's like Tovo Vesharitz Biyado and therefore it's a no go. So therefore the those we shown them, the Rashba, the Ritva, they say it's Likuva, you have to have the Tfila done last. So it's a Machokis Ramban versus the Rashba and the Ritva and the Ra'a. And in fact one of the Rayas they want to bring it's in the Gemara in Yavamas, the Ramban says, Gemara in Yavamas, Ayin Chesam and Aleph. The Gemara talks about 
a pregnant woman, a non-Jew who's pregnant, she converts. So the Gemara says her tefillah is effective for the uber, for the fetus. And therefore, when the baby is born, all the baby, the baby does not require any tefillah to complete the, to complete the gerus. So the Gemara says a pregnant woman, when she converts, the child does not need another tefillah, apparently. So if it's a male, you're going to do the mila later. So we see mila happens after the tefillah. So the Ramban writes, just like we see in this case of the pregnant woman, that the mila is done after the tefillah, and we consider this a good conversion. So to all cases, the order should, we, even the Ramban agrees, the order is mila then tefillah, but we see from this Gemara that if a mila is done after tefillah, it's also, it's not essential, it's not likuva, and the Gemara doesn't require the baby to go through another mikveh after the bris. That's the raya of the Ramban. What does the Rashba, other Rishonim say, who say the Seder tefillah is ma'aki, you have to do the mila first. If you do the mila after the tefillah, you have to do another tefillah. So the Rashba says, and the Gemara says the, the mother's tefillah works, the Rashba says it's only referring to a nekeva. It's only talking about a female fetus. For a female fetus, that's enough. You do the tefillah and that's it because there is no mila. But in the case of a zakhar, in the case of a male, the mother's tefillah is not effective and therefore, since the mother's tefillah happened before the bris mila, so according to the Rashba, to complete the conversion, you must have the mikvah after the mila. So the Ramban says that Gemara is a raya. We see tefillah works before mila. And the Rashba says it's no raya. It's only talking about a female. But a male does need to do a mila, then do, do another tefillah. Other Rishonim, the Ridva quoted by the Namuki Yosef and others, that since at, when, at the time when the mother is converting, it's just a fetus and it's inside the mother's womb, so it's not right to do a meal at that point. And therefore, the Ritva's Kiddush is that even though it's a male, but since it's not fit to do a meal, so we treat it like a woman. Just like a woman, all she needs to convert, besides Kabbalah's mitzvahs, is the tefillah. She doesn't need the meal. So too, the, the, even the male child in the mother's womb, it, um, we can, even the male child, the mother's womb, we treat him like in the cave, and therefore the, you, could do the, you could do the tefillah first. Because there's no need to perform, as a, you know, there's no need to have a meal first because Tosis writes, we view him as in the cave. So to summarize, we have a major machokis we show him. And the Gemara says in Yervamas, do you need the Mila before the Tfila? Is it we kuva not? The Ramban writes, no, it's pragmatic. And as Rai is the Gemara in Yervamas, ayin ches and aleph, that we see with the mother's Tfila is effective even for a male fetus. And therefore, it's not essential that this cycle works there, Tfila before the Mila. So too, in all cases, the Rashba says, no. The mother's seal is not effective for a male, only for a, a woman fetus, and therefore, after the mila, the child has to do another tefillah. And according to the Ritva and the Ra'a, you don't require mila for the conversion. In this case, he's treated like a male. He becomes a full-fledged Jew prior to prior to birth at the time of the mother's tefillah. But of course, eight days later, since like every other Jewish baby boy, you have to have a bris on the A. You're still Jewish without the bris, but um, you just need the bris in order to be machtus, atzmo. We have to, to, to be nechna to the bris of Avram Avinu.